live again at Bindi's HQ with Mad Hair Monday. Hope you've all got your mad hair going. Let me see who's in here already. My gosh, there's 19 of you already. We've got Therese, we've got Carol, hi, um, Ruth, Yvonne, Margot. Oh, I have to turn that one down. Um, Margot, how are you? Um, Dizzy, how are we? Anne, Helen, I uh, hope, yeah, hope everyone is well. It is a little bit chilly, yes, definitely. Uh, Sandra, we've got, oh my gosh, you've got everyone. We've got Yvonne, we've got Doreen. Hey, Lizzie, Lizzie's here from um, Thimble and Thread Quilting. So if anyone wants any questions, and she's gonna have, sort of do pipe in here probably with this quarter inch seamy thing uh, to show you how to flatten it when you do stars. Um, 10 degrees today, so a bit chilly. Hope everyone's keeping warm. Yes, it is a little bit chilly here too. Um, in bed with the electric blanket on. Good on you, Yvonne. Nice one. Oh, hi, April. How are you? Uh, hi, ladies. Nice evening for a class. Now, Paul. Paul has joined in in our class today, ladies. Paul is Lizzie's husband. So he's pretty the techie nerd too, and he also knows everything. Um, didn't see Lizzie, Margot. No, she just pops in there just a little bit, but Paul's in there as well. So we can also chat to Paul. Hi, Paul. We've got a male joining. Yay. Uh, Joanne, Margot. Oh, gosh, you're all having a chat. Uh, currently 11 degrees. Margot, I agree with you, but I know it's cold. Yes, definitely. Um, we've got Sue, Wendy, Helen, Gail. You're all chatting. April, Margot. Katrina's there. Hey, Katrina, how are you? Um, and Margot. Okay, he's stalking you. Yes, I know. Paul's stalking me. He's stalking this group. That's really good. Okay, so I think I've caught up on all the messages. Um, I can now see them popping up on the um, screen. So I hope you're all keeping well. I hope everything's going great. Um, my life is busier and busier all the time. Um, I think it was Gail I was speaking to around 20 in Central Queensland. Nice on you, Dizzy. Um, so you still got no jumpers out. Um, I think it was Gail I emailed me and um, at midnight or something and I actually answered her. So I am still awake at very many different hours of the mornings. Um, in saying that, don't forget we've got our three S's. We've got to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that bell. We've also got to stalk, stalk me on Facebook or Instagram and definitely share. Um, so share all your, um, the posts and everything so we get lots of people in here. Um, we're getting there, we, we, we've got lots coming in and it's fantastic. I love the way you all talk to each other and you're getting to know each other. Uh, one day we will all might get together somewhere, you never know. Um, also, we're saying how busy is. Yeah, okay, Barbara, that one's coming. I'll let you know about that one in a minute. Um, this is going to be the last Mad Hair Monday. I've had to make a decision on where uh, my time can come and go uh, because it's getting really busy. You guys are wanting more and more, which is fantastic, and I love giving you everything, okay, and, and sharing all my knowledge. It's okay, Julie. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just could... Uh, just going to be uh, cutting out Mad Hair Monday. Uh, we'll still have Treasure Hunt Wednesday and we'll still have weekend workshops. But I have figured out that if I do cut out the Mad Hair Monday, um, I'm able to do a bit more intense uh, videos for you where you can see a lot more and uh, not teach so quickly. So I can do it a little bit more, um, a little bit more intense sort of teaching with it. And plus, um, Anna, hello. Um, it's a black ground. Hi, me too. You're a new one, Anna. How are you? I haven't seen you before. Did somebody introduce you? If they did, let me know who actually invited you to come in here. You both get a $10 voucher. Um, no, it's okay. Um, Helen, I will be here still, but it probably won't be. I might pop in with a live one every now and again. Um, it is, Joanne. It just is one of those things. Um, that's a good way. What was that one, Katrina? A good way to manage your time. I am trying to manage. Trying to get a little bit more sleep. Uh, two or three hours a night is getting a little bit draining. Um, at times, I think about every six to eight weeks, I need an eight hour sleep and then the body's back recharged. So I am just gonna cut back a little bit. Don't forget we've got eCraft as well. That's another thing, that's another business venture that Jake and I have founded, um, which is all about the community and helping. And that is something that I am really passionate about is helping everybody to still uh, be able to do this craft, still be able to get things and we're helping the community with non-for-profit organizations as well. So we've got her cave out on the road now. She's going down near Shoalhaven. Um, Oh, didn't you, Margot? Have you got your chat put on? I hope you've got your chat put on so you can see now. Um, so in turn, you're helping us. Yes, definitely, Katrina. I've got to sort of try and uh, stretch my time somewhere. So I'm learning lots of new things as well um, and getting there. Hi, Jeanette. How are you? Um, open your eyes, Margot. <laughs> it's good to share our 
hair on my no it's not sue no no we that's fine it's just i thought may hair mondays is right between the saturday and the the wednesday and it was just getting a lot and i am hi jane as your business and popularity increases you have to change to meet the demand definitely jane that's a definite way of looking at it and um with eCraft, it is a community-based thing which as i said is very close to my heart um helping people in that and helping anyone in need um consequently that comes from my kids as you all know i've had two children one was belinda who is named after my business who um actually passed away when she was nine that's about 24 25 years ago um when she was nine with leukemia and then my son uh chris he's 28 he's lovely but he did go through cancer at 10 as well so a lot of those sort of things that i saw my kids get how people came together to help us through those times help me and my kids um i want to give back so this is where I can give back. My, daughter's, my daughter got me into patchworking and quilting because that was where I actually made my first quilt. Met one of the mums at the schools when I was hanging out at the school because she wasn't well. And she was a patchworker and I got involved there. So I've always um, wanted to give back and this is how I'm giving back. Sharing my knowledge, um, doing what I love because it's actually a lovely thing to do with all the patchworking and designing. Um, but also now I'm going to reach out with eCraft and we're going to help you guys still get to you know be able to get all your needs get other videos get everything it is exciting it's it's it um keeping us all connected definitely lizzie and um we're gonna have videos lizzie's gonna put some videos up soon we have sort of snuck in with the facebook um it's just we'll miss you oh thanks barbara you i tell you now i won't be going too far there'll be lots you'll still see lots of me i'm sure um there's going I, I don't go too far i talk too much and i need to um I keep you guys as friends and keep you guys informed on what's happening and everything plus it gives me time to develop new patterns because I've almost I've got to get some new ones out for you um okay so that's what's sort of happening in my life at the moment so Mayhem Mondays last one it's okay um I'll still be around uh we still will have Treasure Hunt Wednesday that is our favorite and weekend workshops so basically a lot of that sort of Monday and, and Saturday uh yeah Monday and Saturday sorry um, a lot of the information I we able to give you a bit more content in those uh, videos so as well as do static videos so I'm not actually stopping doing them I'm actually just going to do some more off live not necessarily the live ones so um, still share me around still do that you can still go on and see them all um, you'll see all of that sorry and say oh that's okay Helen no it's not I, I always look at it as it was nothing I could control and it has given me who I am right here today um, yeah, definitely, Dizzy. Fair off um, patterns, other things, and one less night. Uh, it's looking really good, Lizzie. Yeah, thanks, Joanne. Um, yeah, it is who I am, and I have grown from it. My daughter gave me very, very much a lot of strength and a lot of insight into why you should live every day uh, happy and why you should live every day because you don't know uh, what tomorrow brings. So um, it is what it is, and this is who I am. And some people are a little bit scared. When I'm quiet, they're a bit worried because something's happening in the head. Um, thanks, Julie. Um, you know, when you see people, you think, oh, they're very quiet. They're shy. <laughs> not with me. I'm not shy. I'm actually just, you know, things are clicking over and that will come. All right, so um, that's what's happening. Uh, let's run through a few of those things. Quilt behind me. Okay, so that is a quilt that I made about 25 years ago. And it was the only one I could find that had points in it because I'm not real good at points. I, you know, trying to look for stars or anything. Um, so it was the one I found. I still have a lot of my quilts from many years ago. But I thought I'd bring in one that I can show and tell that I made, um, yeah, maybe about 20, 25 years ago. Oh, there's lots of trucks going past at the moment. Um, this one was a sampler quilt and it was actually done from a book that had templates. So you had to cut the bit of cardboard out and then cut the fabric into the triangle and join them all together and everything didn't think I did too bad when I look at it at matching all the points uh, but these days there's so much easier ways to do it all right because we do the half square triangles and everything like that different color combination because I did it for my son no it wasn't done for him uh, yeah it might have been done for him because about 25 and he's 28 so it was probably done um, in the boy colors sort of with a bit of orange and blue um, 35 watching say hello to us yeah definitely trees everyone that's watching if I can have lots of people saying hello that'd be great um, let's have those new ones in here. And Therese, if any of them say hi, you can get that $10 voucher and so can they. All right, so what I've done tonight, oh, Lizzie, good on you. Yeah, hi, you're not getting a voucher. Um, <laughs> um, or you're saying hi to everybody else. Okay, we'll say that way. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, actually put, I'm just going to show you, oh, there goes a pin. I'm always dropping pins. Um, so what I'm going to show you tonight is I am going to show you just some points together quarter inch seam all right um 
first time, I know, and it's lovely. And if you go actually onto my website and subscribe, um, that will give me your email. And when you put your email in, I'll send you a voucher for being brand new in here. Um, and, and you'll be able to um, use it through the website. Okay, so I'm gonna just write that down because I'm really slack at remembering things. And I, um, all right, so Anna, if you wanna go on there, you can actually just pop it into the website with your email and I'll post you out a voucher. Okay, send you out one via email. So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, we're gonna talk about quarter inch seams. Okay, so quarter inch seams. Do you, um, with a quarter inch seam, a lot of um, patterns will say scant quarter inch seam. Too many S's. Scant quarter inch seam. Scant means just a little bit larger. Okay, Lizzie, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, scant is a little bit larger because what happens is, um, uh, thanks Anna, um, if you flatten, okay, and reason being is because with the, the thread, if you go, some patterns are right on the quarter inch. Now, if they've actually made it with a scant quarter inch, a little bit bigger, that means that the, and I know it sounds really, really funny, um, that the, the thread is actually taking up part of the quarter inch seam. So that's gonna make your block smaller, especially if you've got lots of blocks in it. All right, when you multiply it, you can lose a bit of space. So when they say scant quarter inch, make it a little bit larger, all right? And that means the thread is off that quarter inch, okay? So that quarter inch mark is gonna mean that when you open it, you've got that quarter inch seam and the thread's just beside it, okay? Does that make sense? All right, so if you put the sewing straight on the quarter inch, that means you're, when you open it, you've actually lost that width of the thread in your block. So you can do it, non scant oh you can do it scant where it's just a bit bigger and then when you open it you've got that perfect quarter inch all my patterns use just a quarter inch they all work okay um i don't go into the scant thing um but basically if you do one or the other just stick with it throughout the whole thing uh scant scheme is smaller lizzie no it's smaller could be yeah hang on um yes it is smaller yes yes it is smaller okay blooper May here Monday, blue fussy, no sleep. It is smaller, yes, go tiny bit smaller. Sorry guys, that is me. Um, only because I've got larger things here. Yeah, okay guys, yeah, uh, it is smaller. It is small, yeah, Lizzie lost the mouse. Yeah, okay, it is smaller, yeah. And when you think of it, that's the right, I've, I've said it the right theory. This is the word larger, it's the smaller. So smaller, so you're just gonna go inside it, all right, just inside there. And then when you open it, you've got your quarter inch here. Yeah, sorry, Barbara. <laughs> Thought I'd give you a little scare on the last Mad Hair Monday. Um, that's what lack of sleep can do at times. And plus, I didn't get to write the list with all the little notes. Look, see, I don't have anything on my list. I mean, Anna's name, so I have to send her. So the fold is on the seam, not the stitching. Correct, Dizzy. Yep. Um, you lost me as soon as you said so. <laughs> sorry, Marco. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to go a little bit smaller. See, this is why I do other videos, then I can edit that out and re redo it. Um, okay, so we're gonna go a little bit smaller, all right, so that when you open it, the actual seam is not, the actual thread is not going into that quarter inch seam, okay? So ignore that little bit at the beginning where I said bigger, go smaller, all right? So that's what scant means, go smaller, all right? Uh, next thing, do you open up your seams when you're ironing them? A lot of dressmakers do this, okay? Um, I don't. Have never done it okay use the same sewing machine when you stitch your blocks all machines differ totally yeah I like just the quarter inch and not worry about the scant me too Katrina I've my patterns never put scant in it whatsoever okay um, there is a video I went ooh, a few weeks ago hints and tips I think it was where I showed you how to set your machine up if you don't have a quarter inch seam a uh, quarter inch foot all right and that shows you how to do it with the ruler Okay, so you can go back on a couple of videos and you'll see how I've set it up with the ruler. And just what you do is you just put your ruler down on your underneath your foot. I won't do it because I won't move the machine. I won't um, move the camera. All right, because you might um, with your drinks. And what you do is you just lightly put the needle on the quarter inch, and then you put a bit of tape. So that's in the machine this way. You put the needle down on the quarter inch mark. Just rest it on there. Then if you put a bit of tape on your sewing machine, okay, um, <laughs> it's not scaring me either, Michael. Um, you actually put it on the sewing machine, a bit of tape, put about three or four layers of tape, and then you've got that edge where your fabric goes in. 
because I always, whenever I teach, like, where people are in front of me, um, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> all right, um, good old Katrina, if you, um, when I teach it, I always say to people, don't watch the needle. The needle is mechanical. It will always go in the same spot. Watch where your fabric's going in, okay? Um, <laughs> the, um, yeah, there's four little words in my sewing room. One of them's pins, okay? But there's a few others. Um, so, yeah, you actually just watch. It's so important for long arm quilters to iron certain seams open so that if you ditch quarter inch each side, the block will look even. Thank you, Lizzie. There you go. So if you get your, before you actually make it, if you're sending it to a long arm quilter, ask them how they want the seams. Um, yeah, definitely dark side. Um, yeah, this is not, yeah, Karen, um, you can go to the dark side of it. Um, sometimes some patterns you have to flip it to the lighter one because of the way the seams are going. Um, where are we? Uh, I did that and it works well. Good on you, Margo. Yeah, it does. So don't watch your needle, okay? So watch where the fabric's going in next to either your quarter inch foot, your bit of tape or whatever. Star blocks need to be pressed open so we don't get pyramids. Here we go with the star block. Lizzie, let me, correct me if I'm wrong. It could be fun tonight. All right, so what I've done is I've just put two 10 inch squares together, okay? Sewn all the way around with a quarter inch seam. I haven't trimmed it, but with a quarter inch seam. Then what I've done is I've cut it down diagonally that way, down diagonally that way, and you'll get four half square, tri uh, four quarter square triangles, okay? So when you open them up, right, you'll have four of these. I've ironed these ones, they're not going to sit right. Okay, so you'll have four of them, okay? And what you do is then you'll have that. Now what I've done is I've actually laid them out so you can do a pinwheel. Here comes the chest again, ladies. Let me move this down a little bit so you can get a little bit, not, not more of my chest, but more of what you can see. Okay, so there, and we have here, where is it? Way. Don't forget I'm doing this mirror reverse and upside down and that way. Oh, that was pretty good. Okay, so we're going to join them together like that. So in here, you're going to have all of these seams giving you a bulk. Yeah, definitely, Julie. Um, I've lost so much. I've lost weight. As you guys know, you, I'm a bit different to some of the old videos. I've lost a lot of weight. It first comes off there too. Um, so yeah, so you're going to have a lot of bulk in this middle. So what you do is when you join them together, now Lizzie, you open the seams. In this demo, I didn't open them. Okay, because I'm just going to show a different other format as well. So what I've done is join them together with the seam. Oh, and when you do, when you're joining them, cut off your dog ears, ladies. All right, or the cat ears, whichever. But cut those little bits off that come on the end here. Okay, cut them so it's square. All right, and then I've joined them together like this. Okay, so there's the pinwheel. And what I'm going to do at the back is where I've done that last seam to join those two together. I am going to grab, and I know what dropped on the floor, it was the unpicker. Arel's prepared. Okay, um, and let's see if I can get this close. I might stand. Okay, so you've trimmed off the bits. Didn't trim that one real well. There goes the unpicker again. Let me just trim that off. Okay, so I'm working on a windmill block at the moment. Um... Half square triangles in each. Oh, nice one, Dory. Have to see that one. Now, which side's going to be better? I think this side. Okay, so can you see where I've got a cross here, right? And then this this is the seam coming up first. Open them, hand, hint if you're home quilting. Uh, good on you, Lizzie. What do we got? Hand quilting in the ditch and you have lots of points. Soften the bolt by tapping it with the hammer on a chopping board. There you go. Okay, this is another way. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually unpick. There's three stitches past that quarter inch seam there. I'm going to unpick those, just those three stitches. So I'm not actually unstitching that one that went across. All right, I'm doing this live, unpicking. Can you see? Um, so when it comes undone, all right, so there I've just unpicked it so that you've got that bit in there. Hence why the hammer is never in the shed, yeah. Okay, so I've unpicked that seam. So what happens is when you open it, you can now, <laughs> thanks Katrina, yeah, all the frowns. Um, when you do it and iron it, you can actually open it up. Let me just do this here because it's easier when I put it down. And you will, what I call, 
get the hammer or your finger. Um, get your finger and you mush. Don't you start sewing from the point. No, because these were blocks. Okay, so these were half square triangles put together, Sue. All right, and these are now blocks. So I'm just putting them together two, and then put these two together and then just join them across. Okay, so then you get your block. So what you do is you actually flatten out, because I've unpicked, oh, because I haven't got the iron here either. I've unpicked it, and see this is why I wanna do static videos that aren't live, so I can take the time to show you these things. All right, so what we're gonna do is you actually open up that seam where you've just unpicked it, and you can smoosh it around, flatten it, use the hammer, as Lizzie says, right? And you can actually push them. So I'm gonna iron these seams, let's use the chest again. I'm gonna iron this seam this way, that one that way, so you know, clockwise, anti-clockwise, whichever way you're looking at this. And though in this seam, you can actually smoosh it and hammer it down, as Lizzie says, and you can put it in the same direction. And that actually flattens it, right, in there. Okay, so that'll flatten it. So you don't have that big bulk. When it's ironed, it's really flattened, okay? Um, Another thing, and Lizzie, this is something that I find why I don't open a lot of the seams in what I do, um, is if you open a seam, right, and I know it all depends on what the pattern is, how you're getting it quilted, the whole thing. If you iron open your seams, just remember that what is holding these two bits of fabric together now, ironing a seam, yeah, I know, um, finger pressing is really good. I don't know how you could flatten it, don't make one. Yeah, Margot, this is why I want to do other videos and have the time for you guys, okay? So they will come. So when you actually flatten them out, when you think about it, if these two fabrics are pulled apart, all that's holding them is the thread, okay? So if you have them where they're not flattened, right, then you've got a lot more, like that's now holding it together as well, the fabric is as well. It's just a little theory thing of mine. Um, yes, we're all having last night. If you're making triangles, do you sew from the point um my triangles usually come from the old half square triangles triangles yeah um lizzie ah do you sew it from the point i don't do a lot of triangles because i do them from the pre-cuts um from this one 25 years ago let's go back in the database in the brain um and see what was in here but i would say these were all put together as little squares and then i've joined the squares together because i would have had to cut every triangle out from there um just remember when you cut triangles you do end up with two sides you sew right from the point machine eats them yes um the other thing is is too don't forget one of the sides is probably going to be on a bias okay so watch that because you're going to get a lot of stretch so um when you're doing triangles see this way uh the only these are now cut on the bias so you have to be really careful but this point where we were sewing here wasn't Okay, so this has got the biasy sort of a stretch where the other side. So just remember when you're cutting them um, that always one or two sides will be on a bias when you're doing triangles. So yeah, start. the other thing is is when you're starting with them so the machine doesn't chew them, always have that tail. Right? Get a couple of bits of scraps of material first, put it in the machine, don't take them off and don't cut the thread and then feed your triangle in. Okay, so that'll hold, it won't chew it up because it's already sewing. Okay, um, Sue, no, no, not at all. Um, we are here for any questions, hence why I get the friends in. Lizzie, Anne pops in every now and again. Um, there's going to be a lot of other things. I've got lots in the works, ladies. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff coming. So um, not only that, I am actually developing new patterns and all that sort of thing. So I, that's hence why I had to take my head Monday out. Um, now, anything else with seams? Um, if you're doing a scrappy quilt, <laughs> seams don't care. Uh, that's in the, you know, your crazy patch sort of ones, which would have been the other side of this, okay? Um, it's actually attached now. Um, but yeah, putting this together, seams don't matter because it's crazy patch. Um, so many times, <laughs> that's all right, Margo. It's, it, the thing is, if you're gonna get it long arm quilt, if someone else is gonna quilt it for you, okay, ask them how they want the seams, especially because of the design, okay? The design of the actual patchworking and the design of the quilting. So if you just want to, if you want to stitch in the ditch, then there's going to have to be a certain way to do the seams. If you're going to want an all over meandering, where the long armor might be able to skip that big bulky seam, you just never know. It could happen that way. 
Um, so yeah, and um, if you're quilting it, you'll only do it once where you don't like the seams open or shut, okay? Because you'll get to know. Um, I find with the stitch in the ditch, so where do you go to have long arm done? Lizzie is a long armor. There you go, thimble and thread quilting. It's sort of more important when you do something like a double wedding ring. Yeah, so then when, when there's a lot, a lot, a lot of seams, okay, um, this is where the long armors sort of get it. So to be able to flatten this is really good too. All right, in the middle, just, just trim those little three stitches and then you can flatten that seam out and it will stay together. Uh, there's lots of ladies around Newcastle, yeah, definitely. Uh, we will probably have a list and get a listing of those on eCraft. Okay, so we'll have listings of different guilds and that on there too. Yeah, double wedding ring, Margot. Let, you do one first and then I'll do one because I've never done one. Um, so, yeah, so with you, um, with rows, do you do the seams go opposite ways to the row before? Working on a listing for e-craft. We are. We are working on a list for long armors. Um, I'm your sweet. <laughs> Good on you, Margot. Um, the... Um, now I've lost train of thought. Margot put me off there. Uh, with rows. Okay, so with rows, uh, you know when you sew the rows together, you always go one row that way, one row that way, one row that way. Um, when I'm doing one of the two and a half inch strip quilts, okay, I always put the seams all up one way when I'm lighting it because I forget which way that one. I just iron them flat, straight up, okay? Um, if you've got really prominent white darks, go to the dark, put a lot of people off. <laughs> That's all right. Margot, I love Margot. I love his all. You're all great. You all have a lovely chat in here and it's fantastic. Um, yeah, so put the put the seams when you're doing rows. It's one of those things that don't... I don't think when you've got rows because you haven't got the bulk of lots and lots of things coming into it. All right, so even this one... Okay, so example, this one has um, a lot of seams in this half of it and no seams in the solid. So I would iron it towards the solid because if I'm trying to iron it back onto all those seams it doesn't work real well all right it's easier to get them all flat onto that one piece of fabric rather than trying to get all these seams to come up that way all right um, stitch in the ditch is usually good for them to be flattened not opened because the flattened one actually when it's on like that's flattened you can actually feel that seam in there and that can help guide the stitch in the ditch if you want to do an echo quilting. Somebody asked me about echo quilting the other day. Um, echo quilting is actually just quilting just a quarter inch or just outside the actual seam. Uh, this is just too hard. I can't sew straight either, honestly. Cutting, thank goodness for rulers and cutting, right, and sewing. That's why I don't make clothes. Uh, when my kids were little, I used to, I attempted to make some clothes for them because I thought, oh, I can sew. Uh, and... Um, the um, one sleeve would be up here, one leg would be up and everything and they would never end it. I couldn't follow the pattern. I found out later in life, don't follow patterns, just make them up, all right? <laughs> you can't see, you know, I can't see you see, so that's okay. Um, so um, all my kids' clothes would have ribbing on the arms and legs because then it didn't matter what length they are, the ribbing actually held them in place. That was my little trick on that one. Yeah, Stitch in the Ditch comes, it, it, it's one of, um, I suppose Lizzie can help here too. How you quilt the quilt depends on the actual pattern. Uh, there's sewing and then there's quilting, definitely, yeah. Um, you know, like, so you've got to pick the pattern and the quilting uh, will go together. This one, because I was no long arm, I was nothing 25 years ago. Um, this one is just, I can hold it up. This one I've sort of just stitched in around, uh, it's a stitch in the ditch, it's not echoed. Okay, so that one's just a stitch in the ditch because I didn't know any better at that time, okay? Um, now, friends like Lizzie, you can send them off to Long Arm. <laughs> um, had a weekend full of doing both. Yes, you did, Sandra. How are you? Uh, Therese, confused. What are we confused about? Um, so, the um, let me know what you're confused about. Let's see if we can just solve it. Um, yeah, so if you've got a pattern that doesn't need a busy bit of quilting and just a normal all over one, or whether it, it does warrant a stitch in the ditch, or it's just got a plain bit of stuff. I'm scared of cutting. Uh, I'm not good with numbers. And so <laughs> it's good on you, Marga. Um, I'll do the cutting for you, you know that. Um, so if it's a pattern that doesn't have a lot of intents in it and the quilting will make it pop, then you get a lot more quilting in it and that's where your long armors can come in. Ditch a 
Oh, ditch a quilt is so time consuming and hard work. I like the quilting to add an element. So don't be frightened to do just a big cross. Yeah, the wait before got cross hatch or a line. Definitely. Cross hatches are great. Right? Just go cross cross. You can get guides for your machine or just make them freehand. Doesn't matter if they're close, little, big or anything, because they're original and they're yours. And that's what quilting's all about. Okay? Um, so anything else we need to talk about with the seams? Did I now who was confused? That was Therese. What are we confused about, honey? Um, tell me what you're confused about because we'll try and defuse it while we're here. Uh, yeah, exactly, Margo. Small sewing machines. Yep, you can still... Can't stipple, Joanne. Hmm, that's where one of my static videos might come in or I might be doing one with Lizzie to show you how to do stippling. Um, that was one of my favourites. I got shown it about three or fourth quilt I made 30 odd years ago. Somebody showed me how to do stippling. I went, that's for me because there's no straight lines. Okay, um, and it was, but back then it was like you couldn't cross it over, you couldn't have a, a bend in it, it had to be curved, it didn't have to have a point or anything. These days, Moran didn't go for it. Uh, quilt as you go, Margot, definitely, Helen. Yep, there's a few videos on quilt as you go that I've done, um, and that is why I'm trying to do more. Uh, drink more wine and relax. Lizzie, that's the total thing. Put the good music on too, honey, a bit of ACDC um, or something like that. And, uh, and that's where you do your quilting. Um, it works. Um, you just need to stress, okay? So when you're doing um, stippling, uh, yeah, when you're doing your stippling on your machine, it is something that you have to be not tense. Uh, I always say to people, practice on a bit of paper. So your arm and your brain get used to that motion, okay? Let me see if I can do this backwards. But when you stipple, um, this is going to be fun. Okay, so I figured the figure eight, but I don't go over the figure eight. Now I'm holding this up and trying to do this backwards. So that would be how I do a stippling, okay? I purchased the chalk and pad, beautiful suit. All right, another one that you can do that makes it even easier if you're worried about crossing over, cross them over, okay? So cross them over, do some quilting like that with swirly girls, all right? Um, another one is, is just to go in and out. So you can go round and, oh, that looks terrible. And go back out there. Yeah, circles aren't good in this position. All right, and then just go back out. Okay, so that one wasn't because the book went up. All right, and another one that I do um, is, and it looks really good on a log cabin, by the way, is this one. Now, this one, you, this one, you have to take a breath at every stop. So I'm going to go there, breathe, and what I do is actually squares. Okay, and it doesn't matter where they go. You can do squares. Oh my goodness, this is on YouTube and all my doodling. All right, so you get that. So um, that's some different ways. Oiling Hugh Jackman's back. Oh, definitely, Karen, just think of that. Definitely, yeah. Um, there's a few others I can think of too, you know. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 you just have to relax, practice drawing them. Then when you get to your machine, your machine, you're not all tense going, oh, I gotta get this right, I gotta get this right, I gotta get this right. It isn't, you're already there, okay? Then you just have to get the speed of your machine and your foot in the same uh, in the same mo like the same coordination all right because if you move really quick you're going to get big stitches if you go down on your foot really quick and don't move quick enough you're going to get little stitches so you just got to get that motion going where it's right little tip i have is on your foot on your machine is once you've got that right because i always set now lizzie's probably not gonna say this is right but i always set my machine one of my domestic ones to full to the full speed okay of the machine but then I set my foot at what my foot should be resting on and the way I found that out was I would find the spot on the foot that worked where I was moving it in the same speed right and it was really nice at that point you get someone to mark it and then what I do is um, put a bit of blue tack or something in the foot so I can't go down any further okay so I can't push it any faster and don't let it off so it's like that tennis ball under the accelerator when the kids are learning to drive. My dad did that to me. All right. So you actually have it where it's on the foot, but you've got a bit of something chocking it so you can't go full ball. All right. So that's the speed when your machine, because if you change your machine speed, then obviously that spot's going to be different. So I always like to keep one right. Okay. So you can either keep the foot full ball and adjust the speed on your machine or just leave the machine full ball and put that little bit of a chock in the foot. All right, another little one is turn the foot upside down, but that never worked for me. 
Um, if you turn the foot upside down, you don't get as much speed on it. I just left it the way it was. So that is a, a different way of doing the free motion, but just testing it and learning it. Um, and those four different ways I do it is all I do. Okay? As you know, with my quilting, that's it. All right? So, are we good? Trees, you never come back with the I confused. Are you still confused? Um, let me know. I know I do talk really quick, and hence why um, we're going to go into other production sort of ones. Yeah, thanks, Lizzie. Um, okay, so what's going on? Uh, as I said, this is our last Mad Hair Monday. Okay, even though sometimes when I do get on Wednesdays and Saturdays, the hairs are still a bit mad because of the weather or anything, my hair goes really frizzy. Fuse, need a bourbon. Oh, okay, Therese, yeah, scotch is mine. Love a bottle of scotch. Um, all good here, thanks, Darrell, no worries, Sandra. Therese, any questions, sweetie, just send me messages and I'm happy to help. I also need a long arm frame. We'll get you onto that, Joanne, no worry. Um, so, yeah, one of the wine corks. Good idea, might be, yeah. Um, look forward to rising slowly in the videos to come, yes. Uh, we'll contact you later, no worries, Therese. Okay, so, um, we are, if there's any more questions, definitely, once I turn this off, I don't usually see them again, so just private message me through Facebook. Um, I'm always on it, my phone is my partner, he sleeps with me as well. Um, so, it's always with me. All right, so, a couple of things. No more Mad Hair Monday, but I am not going far. You still have Treasure Hunt Wednesday, which is in a couple of days. Um, see you, Paul. Um, you've got... Um, weekend workshop which will have this sort of stuff and other workshops and everything i'll be bringing out some static videos as in you know not live okay uh night sandra uh night joanne and um ecraft get onto ecraft we are starting to ramp that one up it is coming now um it is all there we're getting some people to put things on to sell if you know anybody just share it around everybody okay um trees barbara night guys i hope it was informative i know it was a little bit uh weird it was really hard to get the close-up on it. Um, night, Helen, night. Sandra, Mark, thank you. Um, thanks, guys, for all your support, too. Um, thank you for watching me three times a week. Oh, my gosh. Um, we're going to be down to two, but there'll be some others coming through. Man here Mondays, thanks for the fun night, everyone. Don't forget, I'm still on here, Jane. I'm still coming around. I'll be here Wednesdays and Saturdays. It just gives me that little bit of an extra break between them all. All right, that was Julie. Night, everyone. Thank you again. Um, thanks, Sue. Thanks, Yvonne. Um, oh yeah, I miss Mad Hair, but it, it, it's still, the content's still going to be there. Um, oh, Brit and Di, yeah, night Brit, night Di, see Margot, Ruth, Joanne, hope it was a good night, yeah, nighty night everyone, sleep tight, keep warm for the people who are down south, uh, night Katrina, um, everyone have a great couple of days, uh, thanks Lizzie, thanks for all your help sweetie and popping in there, um, Lizzie's a great award winning, renowned long arm quilter, so any questions can go to her. Um, no worries, Doreen, Margot, who was before Doreen? That was Ma Lizzie, uh, Margot, yes, you're all doubling up. And Jane, um, I'm just saying boy to the Monday. Yeah, definitely, just dust to the Mondays. Thanks, April, see you, sweetie. Um, yeah, it's just Mondays. I will see you Wednesday for Treasure Hunt Wednesday. I need to be sneaky with the hiding of them, so I'll get to uh, thinking how I can do all that and get sneaky. Um, and guys, have a great couple of days. And I will see you on Wednesday. Happy sewing. Don't forget, subscribe, stalk, and share. Everything for Bindi's and go on to eCraft. Thank you. See you guys. Happy sewing. Stay warm.